Good morning and welcome to this week's free webinar Friday. So again, a quick introduction just like before. My name's Chris Dan. I'm from Market Your Clinic Online. We're a small digital agency for clinics based in London. There are three to four of us and we're based here in London, um, right next to the O2, which is about 100 metres in that direction. We're in a little community called the Design District it's very nice we like it here so every week on friday morning we talk about a different aspect of marketing your clinic or of marketing small businesses generally and this week is going to be a real quick whistle stop tour of brand design if you have any questions please drop them in the comments if there's anything else you'd like to discuss afterwards then we can do that as well um, we can either bring you up here into the webinar or you can just drop any topics you'd like to discuss into the comments you can also email me if there's anything you'd like to see covered in other webinars in the future. Um, so what we're going to do today is a real quick tour of basically the brand design process. And the way we're going to do it, we've released um, SEO data for sort of pelvic floor phys um, physiotherapy, gyne physio basically this week. So I thought it'd be really fun to demonstrate brand design by just doing a real quick brand design for a, a sort of high class women's physio, basically. So let's go through the process and see how all that works. I'm gonna try and do all this in half an hour, designing a brand and designing a little website and so on to go with it as well. So let me start by sharing my screen. <laughs> there we go, infinity window, love it. So. This is the two things we're going to talk about. So first of all, we're going to talk about positioning. Now let's imagine that first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to look at all the different competitors and we're going to have a look and say, okay, what is everyone else doing? What, what sort of, how are they marketing themselves? How are they positioning themselves? That's the first thing we do. We'd have a look at that. And then we'd come up with what I call scales. So we'd say, okay, here's some scales for you. On the one hand, we have clinics that are low priced. On the other hand, we have clinics that are high priced. On one hand, we have service oriented clinics that are kind of, you know, this, this is the services that we provide, blah, blah, blah. On the other hand, we have brand oriented. This would be kind of like the NHS kind of thing, if you like. And on the other hand, we have more exclusive brands that are kind of saying, look at us, we're absolutely amazing. We charge a bit more because we're really good, but they've got more of a brand identity to go with it. It's um, a bit akin to kind of buying um, uh, a, you know, um, HP sauce or Heinz tomato ketchup over the, the supermarket's own one. You probably can't taste the difference, but do you want the brand or do you just want the service? And on some we have, we'll find some clinics are generalists. So we'll look at some and we'll say, oh, okay, they're doing all sorts of different things. They're a multiple disciplinary clinic that also happens to do women's health. And on the other hand, you'll have a women's health clinic and we'd start to we sort of develop these these aren't you know these aren't set in stone the classic marketing one is price versus quality you have low price low quality and then you have high price high quality where do you want to be on that scale look at your competitors go where they're not what we do here is look at other competitors and get a feel for okay we can start to see that some are down here some are up there we develop these scales as we go along and it's different for every client um, depending on what we're doing now what we're going to do is develop a brand for a women's health physio who let's say they're they're targeting sort of um very more more sort of glamorous um women with a bit more money basically we've looked at all this and we've said okay what we're trying to do is i just want to show you a dentist this is a dentist that we did um researching for another client that we found researching for another client this is kind of the Instagramming people. This is the, the ladies what lunch if you want. And we're going after kind of the yummy mummies who want women's physio. So if you look at this, it's all extremely glamorous. It's all extremely Instagram and so on. This is the thing that we want to go after. Now, we would have gone through and had a look at all of our competitors and so on. We would have developed these scales and then we say, OK, what we want to do, we're going to be quite exclusive. We're going to go high price. We're going to be basically the most expensive that there is. Now, that's a big statement in itself, because some people will just, you know, if you've got the money and you want to feel exclusive and so on, you will just go for the, the most expensive. So then the next thing we'll look at is, are we going to be, well, hello, we provide these services, or are we going to be, look at this, our brand is really something special. And again, just like this 
Chelsea look, we're saying that this is something. But we could go to any dentist. And these people charge like four times the other dentists in the area who already aren't cheap. Um, but you know, you could go to any dentist and get the same services, or you come to us and get the Chelsea look. So they'll um, go for that brand oriented. And we're going to do the same thing with our brand, with our women's physio. We're going to go up there. And now, do you want to be a generalist who? Are we saying we're going to be a clinic who um, offers a range of different services or are we going to be a women's health physio? And our our brand is going to be right on that end. So this process can take some time with a, you know looking at lots of competition, discussing it with a client and saying, you know, where exactly does your brand want to be? We look at these things and from that we develop who has our customer profile. Um, some of this might be a little bit of a stereotype when I say some of these things, but, you know, it's just an exercise. So we're looking at women who are maybe 30 to 50, um, probably who are mothers as well. Let's pop that in because we're looking at gynephysio at the end of the day. Um, they're, they're pretty well off. They feel that they're glamorous. They're probably active on social media. They look after themselves. They go to yoga. They go to the gym, that sort of thing. They're interested in lifestyle. They're interested in fashion, the, the latest fashions. They, um, you know, buying things for their home, shopping and so on. They probably see themselves as attractive and things like this would probably appeal to them. So we'd also have a look at that point. Uh, you know, are there a few other things we can find that that appeal to them? What other websites might they be on? What other things might they be doing? So let's say we've um, we've come this far and we've kind of got an idea of what we're looking for and who we're doing it for. Let's just stop sharing for one second here and then come back. Mm -mm. There we go. And so the first thing we're going to do now is we're going to start looking at a color scheme for our brand. So if we go, first of all, we get a little bit of inspiration. And the inspiration that we're going to start is we're going to say, let's try something that's kind of red or pink. We want something that's that's not too medical. Generally, clinics kind of go on the, on the one end, they go very medical it's blues and teals and that kind of thing and then on the other hand we're looking at more kind of if it's if it's an osteopath it might be something more holistic greens and yellows and that sort of thing or they might try and go for their own unique color scheme which also works as well we're going to do something more like that and go for our own unique color scheme so i'm going to show you some um tools that we use to come up with color schemes now so let's look paladin now this is a color wheel and you've probably seen pictures of kind of designers with a color wheel um, stock images they always have a color wheel and if you're not a if you're not a designer you might have looked at that and gone what on earth is the point of that wheel with all the colors and what does that do and what we use it for is to find colors that go well together so what we're going to do first of all is look for a base color and find something that I think could be the kind of the the general color for our clinic and I think maybe something along some of these lines where we've got We've got some burgundies and some purples and some some pinks in there. Um, maybe can we try something that's, yeah, maybe a little bit more like this. Could that be a base idea for our brand? And then what we're going to do, the point of the color wheel is if I add a color opposite it, 180 degrees across on the color wheel, it will give us something that is it's called a complementary color. Really, it's a color that will stand out against that base color. So we might have a, a base color like this, and then this will be for highlights. This will be for buttons, that sort of thing. If we add colors that are 90 degrees, they tend to clash a little bit, which is an artistic choice. Sometimes we want that. So if we went for sort of something like that, we'd find colors that sort of stand out against each other. What we often go for is um, if we have colors at 30 degrees with each other on the color wheel, then they are very complementary to each other. So they will work well together. So that's a good starting point. And then we add a complementary color as well. I don't think I'm massively sold on any of these, but you know, this is just a tool that we can use to get started. And I think what we might do is have a look at this color. Let's try that as our base color for our for our color scheme. And then now I'm going to show you another tool. If we go to color scheme generate, which here we are. Coolors. I think I've put colours. Yeah, yeah, it's coolors, not color color. Anyway, you see what it is. So this is great because what we can do 
And here it gives us a color scheme. Now what we're going to do is put our base color in there. And we're going to hold that. We're going to stick with that, if you like, just like we might for playing cards. And we'll say we'll lock that one in. Then I'll press the space bar and it'll give us a whole bunch of other colors that it thinks might go with it. That's definitely not what we're looking for. So we keep going around like this and say, okay, work until we find something that we think we start to like. Now, I quite like the way this violet goes with it, but I think maybe we could find something else. This definitely I quite like. Let's not stick just yet. Let's see what else we can get. It'd be nice if we could find something that goes with that poos, it's called it there. I quite like this. Let's have a look if we move that over. They maybe be our, our base colors. So I'm going to lock that in. What we also want is a darker color, something that, see, black text works quite well over these, but what I would also like is a darker color that we can use white text over for contrast. Hooker's green, this one is called, which is quite interesting. Perhaps we could, we can use this to go to darker shades with something like that. That could be our alternative color. That's quite nice. Let's lock that in. And then we want a highlight color, which Palatin has told us if our base color is this piece is CB8AAF, which is what we've got here, applier's base color. And then we see that the highlight color is this kind of green. Now, I think it might be a little bit too much. If we move our base color around slightly, we get a bit more kind of yellowish, something like that, something like what we're seeing here. So I think what we do there is just experiment with sort of yellows, greens, maybe even oranges, and see what can we do that contrasts with what we've got there already for an accent color. So let's keep looking and see what, oops, let's keep looking and see what we can do. Something that's going to pop out and is going to be opposite those, so yellows and greens. Actually, maybe this, if we were to lure it that up a little bit, that's probably a bit too much. We go for something like this. That's quite nice. Screaming green. Let's lock that. And then what I just want is also a really simple light color that we can use for backgrounds and so on. And yeah, that's quite nice. Our mint cream there. So right, let's lock that in. I think we'd probably come back to this and play with this an awful lot more. This is just an absolute first go uh, color scheme. We wouldn't just leave it at that. We do other things with it. Um, but as a as a base point, as something to start with, let's go with that. So then the next thing we might want to look at is um, what sort of fonts we're going to use. And if we have a look at sort of the sort of things we've got, you know, our, our website here, that's using the sans serif font. They're using the little capitals here. It's 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 not bad. We quite like that. I I quite like this um, capitals in the headlines. That's that's done very well. Let's see what other sort of things do we think that people who our target audience might be looking at. Let's see if there is a Chelsea Clinic. Let's have a look at some of these Chelsea Psychology Clinic. So we got just the Chelsea Bridge Clinic, which is one of my favorite in main marketing. Chelsea Dental Clinic we're looking at. It's probably not quite what we're after. Let's have a look at some of these and what are they doing. See here, they've got this absolutely lovely font with um, sort of fat on one side and thin on the other side, like you've done it with an italic pen. And that works really, really well. I like that. Um, we could maybe try and do something like that. That would be really, really good. Not massively sold on the, the rest of the copy, but that looks really, really nice. Yeah, good logo and everything. What are they doing here? This is disgusting. Yeah, no. And Chelsea Bridge Clinic, yeah, one of my favorite clinics. Well done. Yes, yeah, I like the way there's lots of space here. This looks really nice. This is easy to read. The text is slightly on the big side for me. But that's that's very very good. Interesting color scheme as well, where they've got the, the brown there. We use that from that stock image quite a lot as well. Very good. Um, we could also look at things like Vogue. 
and the sort of media that uh, our target audience is, is maybe looking at. So again, there they've got the, the very italic font there, which I quite like, italic in terms of an italic pen. We've got uh, the, the small caps and we've got just simple sans serif fonts. I think we're getting some ideas here. Then we go to Google Fonts and say, okay, let's first of all, let's imagine we're looking for a kind of logo font. And I think what we'll do first of all, if we just say, right, let's call ourselves, I mean, what would we call ourselves? So Chelsea Women's Clinic. And then say, okay, let's have a look at some different fonts. Now, if we start off maybe looking at sans serif, none of these are jumping out on me. Let's try if we look for serif, see if we can find something that's maybe a bit more like what we were looking at with thick on one side and thin on the other side. This is quite nice, it's subtle. It's subtle enough for us. We also want, though, we want something to use for our subtitles and our titles and that sort of thing. So let's have a think. If we go with that for our logo, I mean, we may well um, do something um, you end up doing something completely different with our logo and so on, but let's let's start with something like that for now. All of these Google fonts are available in Elementor, which is why I'm looking at them. So we can start to create a logo using this and then look for a different font for our setting, headings and subheadings and so on. So let's go here. Where's my page? And I'm just going to start having a look at, okay, let's get some, let's get some font ideas. So that one we were looking at there was Nanam Meyanungo. So here we're going to choose Nanam Meyanungo. There it is. That's quite nice, isn't it? But what if we put Okay, and we could pair that maybe if we now look at something else. Let's say we said um, for our subheadings and for our text, we want something that's that's a sans serif. We want a nice straightforward font. And we want something that's going to work with small caps. And ideally now what we'd like to do is just pull those out a little bit, but we're gonna have to do that later on. Let's find something that's, um, can we find something that has a lower weight? than that really what we'd like is to have a look at it looking quite thin but if we look for things that have many styles then we'll find that so let's say at least six styles Montserrat is one of my favorite fonts let's go with uh, railway railway is quiet if I do a W in railway it has this, um, where's railway gone? See, it has this very characteristic W with like two Vs crossing each other. So let's imagine we said, all right, we're going to try a railway for our, um, our subheadings, but we're going to do them in, in small caps. I'm going to make them quite thin, and there's going to be capitals. No, not capitalized, uppercase. There we go. And let's just make those a little bit smaller. And let's, most importantly, pull out the letter spacing a little bit. So we'd have something like that for our subheadings. That looks quite nice. We could use that for subheadings and buttons and so on. And then we've just got to think, OK, what would we do for our text, our main text? I think there we can try also using Railway for that. Let's use a different tool for this. So let's remove that. 
and say put a text editor in there like this like this come on elementor you can do this yeah. there we go and let's put that let's use railway yeah that's pretty good i think we're getting somewhere there and we'll stick to 400 what if we just increase the letter spacing ever so slightly and then let's have a look at how we can also space out this text quite a bit so what i think we do here for text is just increase the line height ever so slightly something like that and there we're kind of getting we're getting something going quite nicely there so we've got this could actually be for our subheadings maybe rather than our logo this can be for our sub subheadings and our text can look like that i think we're onto something there with our font ideas that's really good so let's run with that for now because we've got quite a lot to get through and um, for our logo we'll maybe try something quite simple for now so let's have a quick look at our logo uh, we're just gonna create some space here and then let's create our actual thing above here. So what we want to do, whoops, what we want to do here is, I'm just going to create a logo here in the top corner. It is where we were doing a dummy website, basically. And let's just try, maybe if we use a different font for our logo, I mean, we would spend a long time probably looking at the logo. But just for the sake of it now. Let's stick with um, what we're using. Let's stick with this, just, just for the sake of time. So this is Nanam Mirongo. Now, we can call it Chelsea Women's Clinic. But I think what we're trying to get away, with, away from here is some of this kind of feeling too medical we want it to feel although we want people to have absolute confidence in our services we want it to feel less medical less kind of intrusive less gynecological if you like that's the sort of thing i think we want to just kind of play down not avoid completely but maybe play it down a little bit so we get a bit of a different feel so let's say instead of calling it the chelsea women's clinic we're just going to call it the Chelsea Clinic. But then what we could ideally do then is have something that kind of implies what it is without saying it. Now, what we're going to do here is just start using our color scheme. So where we've got CBAAF or whatever that is. Let's copy that and drop that in. We're going to make that our background for our header. There we go. That's quite nice. So in fact, it's better come out better than I thought it would. And let's see what happens if we make that white. Yeah, I think we're onto something there. We seem to have quite a lot of space here. Why have we got so much space here? I think once we put something in here, that space will go. So let's find out. Yeah, that's better. And what this would be is some. Um, just our menu items, so home. Oh. Let's just say we're, we're going to create a really simple menu like that. I mean, we're not creating a menu as it happens, we're, we're cheating. And our font there was uh, Railway, wasn't it? So let's create railway there. There we go. Topography railway. 
and there we go and we want to make that quite small let's just do our menu let's make that not quite so in your face let's make that white now the way elementor works means that we can't unfortunately put any space between these until we actually create it as a menu and we're not going to create it as a menu because we don't really have the time now why is this there we go and then this oh, there we go look what it's done brilliant no no it's changed its mind never mind and then this we want everything to align in the middle like this obviously there'd be more space between these menu items in in the real thing this is actually a little bit on the big side isn't it so let's just lower that It'd be one of these companies that has to have our logo absurdly big now what let's do is we'd like to do something that maybe said what we do without actually saying it so we can have some sort of logo in there maybe says what we are without having to say Chelsea Women's Clinic. We want to be a little bit more subtle than that. So I think what we'll do is if we look for um, female symbol. Right, and we'll use one of these. We we'll use this kind of Venus symbol. Now we could just um, drop in something, a really simple one like this. I think what would be really nice and what would match the feel of that we're going for with our clinic is if we could have something that looked a little bit more kind of hand drawn, a little bit more styled. So let's see if we can find anything here. That's quite thin. See, that one might work. Let's just open that. Or maybe something like this. Let's have a look, see what we can do with that. So can we do a trial? Uh, 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 uh. All right, we're going to have to cheat a little bit here, I think. So let's just take a look at what happens if we do a try. We'll probably get a watermarked one. Okay, let's just use the oh, wrong one. It's not very good for a women's clinic. Let's just use that. Um, B and paste this in here. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're just going to cheat a little bit for the sake of what we're doing here. And see if we can remove some of this. Why won't it let me remove? What's going on? Oh, I see. Been doing some photo editing and then we're just going to go around and just remove what watermark we can we're not stealing shutterstock's image we're only using it just for our purposes here so it's fine we're just going to get rid of all of this noise and then we're gonna just get rid of the background so we can see uh, and let's try and get rid of everything that's white in fact let's go back to the start that and get rid of everything that's not black basically there we go and then what we can do is just reverse that image yeah i'm just thinking this is control control shift i control i there we go invert copy that we might need to save that actually let's crop it first of all save that as a png let's pop that just in my downloads with some downloads go uh, female.png And let's just drop that in in Elementor. So if we put now in here an image, boom, like this. Uh, this is actually in the wrong place, so that should come first. That can fall down. There we go. And we'll just change the order of this section as well so that we see one on the other side of the other. And then we'll just put our image in here. 
names. There we go. I'm not going to set alt tags or anything like that for now. There we go. We're, we're obviously we're cheating a bit because there we go. Because we're not we haven't edited the image properly and so on. But right now we don't really care. So how do I get these next to each other? Why is it so wired? Set it in pixels instead, not my help. There we go. And let's remove padding on here. Now we're talking. And maybe just make that all a little bit smaller again. In fact, what we could do is make it a tiny bit smaller and then maybe rotate it a little bit as well. There we go. Okay, so it's not perfect. It's got a long way to go as logos go, but we're kind of we're creating something where we kind of go, oh yeah, okay, I see what you do, see what you've done there. Um, Chelsea Clinic, it's obviously for women, right? Okay, I like it. Nice bit of branding. We're getting somewhere. I'm just gonna make that a wee bit smaller again. There we go. So now let's look at what we want to do is just create a. a a splash section here and what I'm going to go for is just basically an image on the left and then another section with some text on the right so first of all let's create our section here we go and now I want an image to go in here let's just fix this so this is actually going to be right for us so there we go that's full width and we don't need any padding either so let's remove that thank you very much and now we find a background image for this now once we get on to talking about I didn't actually look for all of this. What I was going to say was you can just search for Physio logo or something like that to see what comes up if you're using um, a, an image. So it's a good place for inspiration. Abstract versus obvious. We've used something that kind of hints at what it is. Um, well, actually, I'm maybe more on the obvious side, but what you can do is just use something that's a bit more abstract. So, you know, a, a logo might just be a circle or something like that. One of our um, psychologist clients, their logo is kind of a, a spiral like this, which kind of is on one hand, it's just a spiral. On the other hand, it kind of implies that, you know, what's going on in your head. So it's really good. Once you've got something that you like, so if I'm at this point with it, and saying, so, okay, I kind of like the idea of that, but I don't like the execution. So you could then get, take that to a logo designer, which is, I think, what we probably do, you know, once we played around with this a bit more and say, right, look, you see what I'm trying to do here? See what I've got the, the female symbol in Chelsea Clinic? Can you do that, but decent, please? And that's really what logo designers are for. I mean, they can work you through the whole process from the start. What we prefer to do is figure out with the client, like, okay, that's pretty much there, right? Okay, now let's give it to a proper logo designer because we're we're web designers and we're SEO people, we're marketers, but when it comes down to a real specialist skill, like make that logo really good, this is kind of what we want. That's the point where we'd get a logo designer in really. Okay, so images. We've got a choice basically with images. We can, for all, for all medical clinics, we can either show the service. So for example, show you Crispin's website. On Crispin's website, we show the service. There we go. This is an osteopath. He's basically, he's going to come along. He's going to do stuff to your body with his hands. There we go. Um, the other thing that we can do is we can show the lifestyle. And I'll show you another one of our websites. Um, uh, Black Shot's very much a family-oriented clinic. So we've got these images of the happy family going out doing fit and healthy stuff together. So it's kind of... It's showing the lifestyle that comes from our service. Look, grandma and grandpa are perfectly fit and healthy. They're chasing the kids down the beach. Kids are happy and healthy. Everyone's happy and healthy because they all came to Black Shots and they all got looked after. The other thing we can do is indicate the service. Now, I actually haven't had a look for this, but I bet if I look for a nutritionist, you can probably find some... Uh, Uh, 
hit so straight away we're indicating the service so it's not showing the service itself because the service itself is basically two people sitting down and one of them going like this and listening while the other one says this is what i like to eat and this is what i don't and then the first one says it's not really a very sexy image so the other thing we can do is have the lifestyle so you could show someone being fit and healthy like we did for the osteopathic clinic or you can indicate the service which we've done here by having lots of different foods so what we're going to try is just each of those in turn, that was quite cool for our photos. That's some nice websites there by the looks of it. Um, let's just get rid of these. So the first thing I can do is indicate, is sorry, show the service, right? So I'm gonna go pelvic floor physio. Okay, let's try something else. Women's health physio. Okay, not what we're looking for at all really. Um, Let's try something else. I'll go fertility clinic, which is not what we're looking for. But you might find something a bit so here we go. This is the sort of thing I'm talking about. So granted, we're talking more about pelvic floor stuff. This is obviously fertility stuff, but you know, you've got okay. I mean, this is a bit looks a bit um twee, isn't it? This image is kind of like holding your hand saying, You will have children one day, my darling. Don't you worry, this sort of thing. Sort of thing showing the service basically it's a couple they're there because they want to have kids and they're talking about this so it, something like that with maybe a kind of demonstrative prosthetic and someone in a white coat having a conversation that would be how we would demonstrate this survey we would show this service it's the polar opposite of basically what we want to achieve with this where we want it to feel glamorous we want it to feel like market and so on it's just getting a little bit too gynecological gynecological a little bit too quickly here we go all this sort of thing like that's not what we want. So let's move on to the next one. Let's say, okay, we're going to indicate the service. Now, there's a there's a really common thing that they use for indi indicating sort of fertility and women's health services, which is hands in heart over tummy. Let's see if that brings up what I'm looking at. There you go. All of these. It's it's so cliche. It's unbelievable. But there we go. We could go for something like that. So we could say, okay, who looks like our target audience or who looks like what our target audience wants to look like? The problem is that most of these women are pregnant. We're looking for women who have actually had their baby. Whereas uh, something like that, maybe something like this, maybe. Let's see if we can find one that's portrait just because that's going to fit way better in our um, in what we're doing there. Where is that? Doctors. Vertical. Vertical, not portrait. It's vertical. It's not vertical. There we go. Okay, so what, what we'd really be looking for here is someone who's got this kind of glamorous kind of look that our target audience really wants to go for and that's not really what I'm feeling from any of these pictures at all um, let's have a look see this is too loud our target audience would not wear that that dress or that cardigan for example this may be this is maybe the closest we're going to get doing this very quickly although I don't like the idea that it's it's a man in the picture as well that just doesn't seem to quite work for me let's imagine that this was without that guy there then then we'd be talking so let's let's just download that and pop that in right Things so it actually goes where we want. Um, position center, center. Um, and then let's just put some height on this container. Yeah, like that, and then maybe here we go top center as well. Oh, that's all we get, is it? We don't actually get to see faces. Uh, uh. Okay, so that. That's how we might try something that demonstrates a service. I mean, that's 
a terribly executed example because again i don't like having the guy there i'd like to see the woman's face she looks pregnant which is not what we want we want something more like these these other ones but ideally we'd like to see someone who looks you know fit and glamorous and so on with their hands in that face something like this but just a bit more a bit more chelsea basically so let's try the other approach instead which is to show the lifestyle so now i'm going to say glamorous woman with baby maybe maybe not with baby actually let's just go glamorous woman i don't know what's coming up with here some of these images that seems to be very poorly done search and here we go what have we got here these all look a little bit too glamorous maybe they look like you know a vogue shoot whereas i want a woman who kind of looks dare i say it, like posh a bit glamorous but natural basically our target audience so let's try something else now something i've just thought as well is that if we were, could maybe put a couple of women in here so two women having fun Let's see what we get. Okay, let's try it. Talking, smiling. Talking, laughing. Try to be laughing. Can we get glamorous? Again, a bit too much. sort of thing maybe but we want them to be so i want to feel a sort of a feeling of kind of conspiracy kind of they're like they're they're you know they're they're talking about the you go to the chelsea clinic you know, this amazing chelsea clinic it's really really good <coughs> <I'm gonna> come, <coughs> complicity sorry rather than conspiracy let's try something let's try ice instead something like that that's they're not really glamorous enough maybe this is a bit more what we're looking for but without being quite laughing quite so much but i'd really like them to be um sort of almost like like they're gossiping you know but also to fit the rest of our bill okay let's have a look let's have a look <coughs> um Yep, too much laughing. Um, wine. Try smiling. (coughs) 
All right, I think what we're going to have to do is go with this because in the interest of time. So let's just do a comedy trial of that. <coughs> and let's drop that into here. Okay, I think that we'll have to do for today. So let's just maybe make this section a little bit less. Maybe reduce the height a little bit as well. There we go. Okay, that's actually not so bad after all. That kind of works. All right, let's go with that. Okay, so well, now we finally we will get on to um, the copy. So here what we're going to do, we've got our fonts already. So what we're going to do here is just to get back to our color scheme. <coughs> and this is probably this color is just a little bit more. A bit darker than we'd like, but let's just try dropping that in as the background for this section. Right there. There we go. So if we play a little play around with that, just make that not quite so much. There we go. So we've changed that to F2, F, 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 B. That kind of works. I'm all right with that. That's nice. So now let's go back to our fonts. And where we've got this, copy that element and put it in here. And just center everything in this. And for now, I'm just going to do a proper dirty little hack and put a whole bunch of padding on either side of this section. And we could, I suppose, drop some stuff in here. Let's have a look now at just what can we do with our color scheme. Okay, what if we try using this for our text, or at least for our headings? Mm. Maybe. Maybe not. What I think we would prefer is a darker version of this, which isn't in our color scheme, but we can start off with that. Start with that, drop that in here, and then just go for a darker, stronger version of it. Okay, great. And then we're going to put our text in here. That's much too much text. So we're going to think, okay, how much text do we actually want in there? Maybe that, maybe a little bit more. Yeah, that's kind of getting along the lines we want, isn't it? Now let's just have a quick think about messaging then, because obviously we know it's the we know it's the Chelsea Clinic. We've got our images and so on. And what are we gonna say in here? So the classic one, the obvious one. Welcome to the Chelsea Clinic. And then we could say in here, okay, what do we do? Um Health Physio Clinic. Now that's pretty dull, and that is not really the vibe that we're going for at all. It doesn't feel exclusive, it doesn't feel fancy, it doesn't feel really anything very much. So, what if we change this now? Something like restoring confidence in your body. Again, 
to just it feels straight away it feels like something where you're going to go and get a tummy tuck or a plastic surgeon something like that maybe even a sort of personal trainer workout it's not really the sort of vibe that we're after at all so what if we said something like this right you oops we're still in caps you are amazing we're trying to create something that vibes with our target audience but we capitalize verbs always apa capitalization rules let us help you feel it that's definitely a bit more along the right lines still not particularly happy with it why won't that stop being highlighted go away there we go we're definitely getting there um, you're amazing. Let us help you feel it. What if we said you are beautiful? Full stop. And I just wonder whether we actually want the subheading in there because just what I'm thinking for the next bit of text and how we're going to appeal to our audience. I mean, I like the typography of this. This works really well. Let's see if we just remove that. What does that look like? Yeah, this is going to be much better. This is going to be straight to the point. Again, what we're avoiding here is getting too gyne straight away. And when, I, when someone like one of our target audience to land on this page and go, oh, great, yeah, oh, this is not and we're not coming in with saying we're going to fix the incontinence that you have since you know since you had your kid. We we coming in and saying look, we we vibe with you this kind of thing. You know, well, when we get down to the next section, we'll say these are our services, and that's when we'll get into the actual things themselves. So what we're going to do here is just try a sort of action, interest, desire thing. We've, I've come way over time, so I'm just going to quickly have to think about something here. We say, you are amazing, you are um, fascinating, you are sexy, you are a carefree child. As a woman, you are so many things. And then, so we're hooking them in a little bit there. I mean, this could be worked on, obviously, a lot, lot more. But we're hooking them in with something there. And then we say, as we go through life, Events such as having children can affect our bodies in ways we may not want. This, this is a first draft. You know, we can do this in so much better ways. And it's going to cut some of this here. Affecting our lifestyle and confidence. Right, and here we go. Let's be a bit more subtle about this. Life events can affect our bodies we may not want. As women, which also gives a little bit of, you know, we're women, you're women. So a little bit of feeling of solidarity there. So we life affects our bodies we may not can take a toll on our bodies. Um, we don't want them to feel like their body's been taken a toll on. Affect our bodies in unexpected ways. Right, I think if we 
as women, life events, life can affect our bodies in unexpected ways. When life happens, our expert physiotherapists are here to you regain your lifestyle and confidence in your body. Should you look cool with one of our experts today? Brilliant. That's what sort of thing we're after. Again, it's the first draft. There's a lot. There's a lot we can still do with that. But as a basic idea, we're really getting somewhere now. And then I'm just going to drop in a button, the final thing here, because we always want a call to action. What happened there? Button. And again, let's look at our color scheme. This was our action color. I think it's much too lurid. But let's just have a little, yeah, much too. Okay, what can we do? We can try something, in fact, that's more like our, our drab color. I think that's going to work quite well. Let's try using this one. Go there and pop that in there. Yeah, a little bit. Ah, oh, there we go. Less green. There we go. That's nice. And then we're just going to switch that for our font, which is Railway. Let's uppercase that bad boy. Speak to us. Do you really want to say contact and say let us help you? Schedule an appointment, let's go with that. And let's just fatten that typography up just a wee bit. There we go. And I think we need a little bit more space in it. <coughs> yeah. I think we're there. There we go. So that's, I'm going to stop there because we've kind of done what we expected to do and what I aim to do. Granted, it's taken literally double the time that I hope to do it in. I always um, expect things are going to take less time to do it. That's why I always underquote people. Um, but there we go. That's done. I'd like to be able to put some spacing in here. So I think I'm just going to do that in a minute. And then we'll just put this out and say, there we go. This is what we created today. But that is basically, that's the start of our brand. And what we've done is we've We've created something. It's a first draft. It's all a first draft. I don't want to suggest that we'd say, right, there you go. It's finished to a client. We definitely wouldn't. But that's that's not a bad start. I'm going to say, okay, we've got a color scheme that kind of works. We've got an overall feel that kind of works. We've got, you know, we see that that's maybe not the image, but it's definitely along the right lines. The whole overall feel of this is exactly the sort of thing that we wanted to create. And it's saying, yes, this is going to appeal to our to our target audience and uh what we've done here with the copy as well of sort of taking this sort of roundabout approach to it of not saying okay this is what we do we do gyno physio and instead saying you know here you are, you are beautiful you're amazing you're you're sexy but as women life can affect our body in different ways when life happens we're here to help you regain your lifestyle it's it's very subtle and it's not just yeah come on we'll, we'll, we'll sort your bits out you know it's um it works really well in here. Yeah, we do have this the right kind of vibe actually with this picture because this is our target audience and they're together doing what our target audience do. They're probably a bit younger than our target audience, which is also really good because you want your images to be kind of who your target audience slightly aspire to be rather than necessarily your target audience. Now, I don't imagine anyone's still listening, but let me stop sharing my screen and go back to StreamYard and see what's going on. Do we have any comments? No, okay, fine. What we'll do is we'll stop there for today and we'll say, wow, look at that. We've got a good start on a design there. We work on that some more. We take it to a client, maybe give them some alternative options and say, 
are we along the right lines here what do you think thank you very much for watching and i'll see you next week on well i'll see you in two weeks because we don't have one next week see you in two weeks on free webinar friday